Some of you need to go back to, in your mind, the day you found Christ and how broken you were and how humble you were and how dependent you were and how thankful you were just to be forgiven. Low on expectations, high on gratitude, so thankful for Jesus. That's the whole Christian life, though. the last time you quieted your heart and just asked God for wisdom? Just, just like that, just straight up, God, I need wisdom. I don't know what to do here. Psalm 62 verse 8 says, trust in him at all times, you people. Pour out your heart to him. God is a refuge for us. Another treasured passage uh, in my life. So, notice the slight relief here. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not driven to despair. Perplexed, but not driven to despair. The, the idea of despair is to be hopeless, to give up hope. I might be at the end of my wits, but I'm not at the end of my hope. And hope is what causes me to turn to God. There can, there can be a better day. There can be a turnaround here. And we turn to God. And we pray very openly for wisdom, for provision. I don't know how your answered prayer thing's going. I'm on a, I'm on a bit of a roll right now. I've, do you have like good, how many people have like good seasons and bad seasons in answered prayer, right? I, do you get that? Come on, anybody with me? Anybody in the front section or even honest? Oh, don't sit here no more if you're not going to be honest in church. I got to look right at you guys. Okay, I'm just kidding. You know I am. So, so um, we, we agree on that. There's like good seasons and bad seasons. I had a Friday, I was having lunch uh, with uh, some friends, and then um, one of them seemed really burdened about something. I said, what's the matter, man? You just don't seem like yourself. And he kind of told me, you know, about just some uh, medical concern. And I went to this person. I got to go see a specialist. And I said, well, who's the specialist? He said, I don't know. I just picked some person to go to. And I was whoever they tell me to go to. And I said, yeah, that doesn't sound great, you know. Let me, let me try to find a specialist for you. And then I got my car and drove away, and I was like, why did I tell them that I would help them find a specialist? I have no idea how to do that. <laughs> and so I was driving in my car, and I was going to meet another friend, and we were going to play a little bit of golf. So I, it was a nice day for it, and I said, um, you know, Lord, just help me to have some wisdom here. I just... I really don't know, how, and I love this prayer. How am I going to help them? And I should golf more. I'm telling you right now, I should golf more because great things happen to me when I golf. <laughs> Can anyone say amen to that? Amen. Thank you. All the golfers are like, amen, amen. <laughs> the best sermon I ever heard. <laughs> and and, and uh, so, so I'm on like the fourth hole, and I see this guy that I know. He is not part of Harvest. I see this guy I know, and I'm like, I'm, I'm really sure he's an eye doctor. So I was like, Hey, you know, he said, hi. I said, hey, dude, how's it going? You're, you're an eye doctor, right? He says, yeah, yeah, I'm an eye doctor. I said, well, you know, are you this kind of doctor? He said, no, no, I'm not. I said, oh, that's too bad. Because I really need to find someone who's like a specialist in this. And he was only playing in a twosome. And he means, oh, you mean this guy? <laughs> he says, this guy, he said, if I, if I needed that, he said, there wasn't anyone in all the world I would trust like this guy. I was like, God is so awesome. <laughs> now, you could not tell me for a moment, don't even try to tell me, that my just heartfelt little prayer, God, I just don't know what to do here. Could you just help me find something like this? And, and I'm going to tell you, I have times in my life where I do that, and it didn't happen like that. But I got lots and lots and lots of times where I did, and it did happen like that. And God is just so faithful when we're just humble enough to say, I don't have it, I don't have it, I, I really need it, uh, could you please? And he knows how to give good gifts to his children. I got thinking about the praise chorus this week, God will make a way when there seems to be no way. Isn't that a great line? God will make a way when there seems to be no way. And uh, when I'm in a corner, he is there. When I don't understand, he is there. There's just a couple more here, and then the majorly good news. Look at verse 9. 
afflicted in every way but not crushed, perplexed but not driven to despair, persecuted but not forsaken. That's an awesome phrase. Jot this down. When I'm under attack, he is there. The word uh, translated here, persecuted, means literally pursued or to be chased with an evil intent. All right, and I don't mean to get all crazy in church here, but how many people have ever had a dream where they were getting chased? So you've never had that? Never? Praise God. That's just awesome. 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 Can you come to our house and pray over us? Before. So I have this dream, you know, and, and you're getting chased and you don't kind of even know who it is, but you need to get those feet moving. And in my dream that I have, for whatever reason, I am not able to run. It's like my feet, why did I ever step in these pails of concrete? And why did I let them harden? And so it's like you're trying to run, but you can't. Anyone? Right, okay, totally. If you get that, then you understand what it is to feel like there's something after. You know, Martin Luther, uh, the great reformer, uh, reported that uh, at one point um, he felt the enemy's attack so strongly, Luther said, though we don't see our enemy Satan, we can often feel his breath. Though we don't see our enemy Satan, we can often feel his breath. Luther reports that having felt it uh, so strongly one evening while he was sitting quietly and writing, think of this, that he took uh, the bottle of ink that he had his quill in and picked it up and threw it at the wall. And he just felt the enemy coming after him like that. Let me just ask you, because I think that's the imagery here, persecuted but not forsaken, literally means to be pursued or chased with an evil intent. Do you sometimes sense the attack of the enemy in your life? Do you sense that, as it says in 1 Peter uh, uh, 5, uh, that uh, our enemy is like a roaring lion uh, seeking whom he may devour, and that he is, he's moving about. And now Satan is not omnipresent. Don't give to him the characteristics of God. He's only ever been in one place at one time. But he has a demonic host. He has a innumerable, the Bible says that angels are innumerable. And if it's right what we believe from certain passages that about a third of the angels fell with Satan who was originally uh, created and a glorious, beautiful angel, but he fell and became a, uh, the leader of the demonic host. So if the angels are innumerable and one third of them are now demons, there's plenty of them and they're not sitting around playing cards. And Satan leads uh, his army in continual attack on the people and the purposes of God. He, he's not attacking his own. Trust me, they're, they're already on our team. He's attacking the people that are on God's team and agitating, disrupting, irritating, and of course, always uh, lying. Now, uh, some Christians are famous for making everything uh, satanic. You know, oh, that, that devil, oh, that devil, he, that devil, he's, yeah, that's just your flesh, you know. And the Bible says we have three enemies, the world, it's the world system, that's so apparent, the flesh, that's my own sinful nature. The world, the flesh, and the devil. Uh, it's all three. Say that. It's all three. All three. It's all three. It's, it's, it's not never Satan, nor is it always him. So uh, just these five things, uh, super quick. You know it's Satan when. You know it's Satan when. Uh, first of all, uh, when it comes out of nowhere. I don't know about you, but my flesh is with me constantly. My sinful bent, my inclinations, my besetting sins, that's there all the time. But the enemy's not there all the time. So if you know what it's like to have something come out of nowhere and tempt you, um, that very likely is satanic. Uh, secondly, um, it's irrational. If you're struggling with something that if you told your sister or told your spouse, and they'd be like, you're thinking, what? That's the craziest thing I ever heard. You're, you're thinking, what? I've had times preaching in this church, many times. Not every week or every month, but I've had times right in the middle of the sermon where I'm like, tip over that pulpit and just walk out and don't ever do this again. Well, <laughs> I don't even feel that way. 
And if I told someone who really knows me well that I thought that, they'd be like, are you crazy? This is what you love. This is what you've given. It's irrational. It's irrational, all right? So you know it's the enemy when it's out of nowhere. It's irrational. Now get this, it's unrelenting. It's, it's there, it's coming after you, that sense of hard to shake, hard to shake, hard to shake. You know, I can't just put on a piece of music and it's just gone. I, it's, it's harder to shake than that. And though it isn't with me always, when it's on me, it's, it's hard to shake. Then, um, I don't know, we're irrational, unrelenting, for, uh, it's, it's dangerous. So the, the, the outcome of following that line of thinking would have very, very serious consequences. That's the enemy. He's not looking to tickle you. He's not looking to trap you. He's not looking to get you in the ditch for a couple of days. He's looking to devour you. He wants to destroy you and your family in the ugliest, messiest, most Christ-dishonoring way. All right? So he wants the messiest, the worst, the awfulest. That's the enemy. And when the outcome would be, there, that's, a, that's over forever, that can never be fixed. Not, not that. I mean, there can be grace in the future, but that is destroyed. That's the enemy. Out of nowhere, irrational, unrelenting, dangerous. And you know it's Satan when, get this, because this is awesome. You know it's Satan when it falls to God's word. Nothing of the world, the flesh, and the devil falls. I mean, it falls Bam! Like that. Over! Resist the enemy and he will flee from you. He will, is this awesome? That demonic presence will run from you under the power of God's word. That's why we need to know God's word. And this is why we need to stand on God's word. All right? If you don't know God's word, you can't quote God's word. Jesus quoted the word of God in defeating Satan in Matthew chapter 4. We can quote the word of God when, see, he's a liar. And what's he putting in your head? He's putting lies in your head. And your life is over. And you'll never laugh again. And, and you'll never be past this. And whatever he's putting in your head, it's a lie. It's a lie. So how do you resist the enemy? You name the lie and you insert the truth. So you're like, that's a lie. That, that's a lie. And this is what's true. That's what Jesus said. Satan was like, um, you know, I mean, what were those ones in Matthew 4? He was like, um, you know, um, look at all this. I'll give you all of this. Really? He's talking to Jesus Christ who spoke and the worlds were formed. And he's, Satan's offering to give it. He's like, you mean the stuff I made? You're going to give it to me? Really? Really? That's like someone showing up at your house and saying, I'll give you your house. Really? It was not super attractive, but it had to be a fairly desperate play to try to get Jesus. So he was just throwing everything he had at it. And, and, and Jesus every time said, it is written, it is written, it is written. Now, if Jesus Christ the Lord used the word of God, he is the word of God, but if he used the word of God to defeat the enemy, then who are you to stand against the enemy of your soul without the word of God? You are nothing, all right? But in him... All right, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Greater is he who is in you, the Holy Spirit, bringing the word of God to mind. Greater is he who is in you than he was in the world. Now that was just three or four scriptures I just quoted right there. And you can get victory over the enemy if you hide the word of God in your heart. The Christian life is Jesus Christ in you. It's not you saved, now working hard. It's not saved by grace, sanctified by effort. It's Colossians 2, 6, as you receive the Lord, so walk in Him. You've probably heard us close the program with the exhortation, stay in the Scriptures. Stay in the Scriptures. Stay in the Scriptures. We'll see you next time you stay in the Scriptures. The Bible says that faith comes by hearing the Word of God. And we never want our proclamation of God's Word to be a substitute for you getting into the Scriptures yourself. Instead, we want to point you toward your own time in God's Word. And if you stay in the Scriptures, you're going to be filled with the hope and encouragement and strength that God's Word always faithfully provides. If you wanted to say one thing that would assure people of everything, you'd tell them the same thing that I do. Stay in the Scriptures. And that's why I always say it to you.
As we begin a brand new year, we want to help you get and stay in the scriptures on a daily basis. If you're ready to experience the refreshment that comes from regular time in the Word, we would love to send you Fresh Start. This new 31-day devotional will help you meet with the Lord every morning so that you can carry His truth with you throughout the entire day. Also included is the Fresh Start DVD, featuring video devotionals with Pastor James. Watch as he discusses what his own morning quiet time looks like, and join him as he shares more than a dozen devotions from God's Word. Christianity is all about a personal, daily relationship with Jesus. Experience Him like never before by requesting Fresh Start when you support this ministry with any amount. And for your support of $75 or more, we will also send you our one-of-a-kind coffee mug set, as well as Pastor James's five-message CD series, Times of Refreshing. Be reminded to stay in the scriptures and enjoy some morning coffee alongside your daily devotions, or while you're listening to Pastor James's full teaching on how to be refreshed through your time with the Lord. Request this new collection when you call 800-545-6800 or go online to jamesmcdonald.tv. Psalm 119 verse 9 says, How shall a young man keep his way pure? By taking heed according to your word. And verse 11 says, Your word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. See? And have those verses ready, loved ones, and you'll be able to share this as your personal testimony. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Persecuted, but not forsaken. How awesome that is. And then, lastly, this. Struck down. See it there? But not destroyed. So, when I'm under attack, he is there. And finally, when I'm defeated, uh, he is there. And the idea here of struck down is the picture of a, a boxer again, knocked down. And when, when you, you know, you've been knocked down. I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, ladies, please don't hate, but I'm, I'm a fairly big fan of that boxing thing. And I, come on, man, don't leave me up here. And, and, and I kind of like that part, you know, it's sport. And when, when he finally gets that punch in, a lot of times they're just dancing, it can get super boring. But when, when he finally gets that punch in, what does he do? And the guy's knocked out, what happens then? He is like on top of him. And he's going to get a couple more shots in. We're going to end it right here. And that's the picture of struck down. Lying on the canvas as the referee counts one, two, three. You wish he'd hurry so the matter could be settled. You lost. It's over. The pain of the punch that dropped you is immense. The humiliation of lying on your face for all to see. The confusion of voices shouting, stay down, stay down. But God's word saying, struck down but not destroyed. Struck down, but not destroyed. You can get up. You can get up. Now, years ago I told you this. The very first time I preached from 2 Corinthians 4, when it became really precious to me, I kind of stopped there. Isn't that awesome, everyone? You know, hard-pressed on every side. You know, perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Amen? That is an awful sermon. It, there's no how. It, that's, that's, that's some pep talk. We don't need no pep talk at church. You know, struck down but not destroyed. Struck down but not destroyed. How, 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 how. And how did I miss verse 10? Here it is. Always carrying in the body, my body, the death of Jesus, my Savior, my Lord, with me. Always carrying in the body the death of the Lord Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our bodies. See, that is it. That is it. And, and always mindful of the presence of the Lord, always carrying about with me. He gave his life. I'm giving mine. The old me is gone. That guy's dead. 
Now this is the new me, my life in Christ, living for him. That's all that matters now. Always carrying that about. Always bearing, the one Kathy and I memorized, always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be manifested in my body. I couldn't even give you the number of times that I have gone to that. What's the way forward? What's the way forward? Always carrying about in my body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus might be manifested in my body. And I've preached that to you so many times. Christ in you, the hope of glory, the presence of Jesus. God has made no provision for you to live the Christian life, only to live his life through you. The Christian life is Jesus Christ in you. It's not you saved, now working hard. It's not saved by grace, sanctified by effort. It's Colossians 2, 6, as you receive the Lord, so walk in him. Just as humbled, just as dependent, just as filled with faith when I trusted Christ, now the same way, every step of the way, every day for the rest of my life. And some of you need to go back to, in your mind, the day you found Christ and how broken you were and how humble you were and how dependent you were and how thankful you were just to be forgiven. Low on expectations, high on gratitude, so thankful for Jesus. That's the whole Christian life, though. Never, never, never get away from the cross. Never get away from the cross. Always bearing about in my body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be manifested in my body. In recounting his experiences as a political prisoner in Russia, you might know this name. Look it up on Wiki if you don't. Later. The political prisoner Alexander Solzhenitsyn told of a moment when he was on the verge of giving up all hope. He was forced to work 12 hours a day at a hard labor camp while existing on a starvation diet, a crust of bread, a little bit of soup, day after week after month. He becomes seriously ill. The doctors feared for his life. One afternoon while shoveling sand in the blazing sun, he just stopped working. He did so even though he knew that the guards would come and beat him severely, maybe beat him to death. But he felt he just couldn't go on. Then he saw another fellow prisoner inching close to him before they noticed he had stopped working and just reached out with his shovel and drew a little cross in the sand. Then quickly rubbed it out without speaking. Solzhenitsyn felt all the hope and all of the gospel flood through his soul. It gave him courage to endure the difficulty of that day and the months of imprisonment that followed. I love that passage. And I'm seeking to live it. I hope you are too. I know that last verse that you read in the message is really meaningful to you guys as a couple. Mom, would you read that? And then, Dad, would you talk about why it's so important? Yeah. Love to. 2 Corinthians 4.10 Always carrying in the body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus might also be manifested in our bodies. Well, what I love about that verse is, is that, of course, I had preached for years. We are troubled in every side, yet not in distress, perplexed but not in despair, persecuted but not forsaken, struck down but not destroyed. But I didn't understand that th those are noble sentiments. You know, I could get up and preach, struck down but not destroyed. But the point is, it's the constant carrying about of my awareness of the presence of Jesus, always bearing about in my body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus and, and might be manifested in my body. And when I have that awareness, when I have that awareness that Christ is with me, you know, like the guy said, um, I won't be able to think of the source now, but this is not original with me. He said, you know, Christ before me, Christ behind me, uh, Christ above me. And I was sitting at the piano this morning, actually, and I got going over that old hymn, yeah. Be Thou My Vision, mm -hmm. O Lord of My Heart. Yeah not be all else to me, save that thou art. And, and, and then he says, thou my best thought by day or by night, waking or sleeping, thy presence, my light. To, to think that even, even when I'm sleeping, that, su that, that subconscious awareness that Christ is with me at all times. You know, I'm praying that somebody needs that today. And, and maybe you need to be refreshed mm -hmm. in your awareness of how very close Jesus is to you right now.
The Bible says that faith comes by hearing the Word of God. And we never want our proclamation of God's Word to be a substitute for you getting into the Scriptures yourself. Instead, we want to point you toward your own time in God's Word. As we begin a brand new year, we want to help you get and stay in the Scriptures on a daily basis. If you're ready to experience the refreshment that comes from regular time in the Word, we would love to send you Fresh Start. This new 31-day devotional will help you meet with the Lord every morning so that you can carry His truth with you throughout the entire day. Also included is the Fresh Start DVD, featuring video devotionals with Pastor James. Watch as he discusses what his own morning quiet time looks like, and join him as he shares more than a dozen devotions from God's Word. Christianity is all about a personal, daily relationship with Jesus. Experience Him like never before by requesting Fresh Start when you support this ministry with any amount. And for your support of $75 or more, we will also send you our one-of-a-kind coffee mug set, as well as Pastor James's five-message CD series, Times of Refreshing. Be reminded to stay in the scriptures and enjoy some morning coffee alongside your daily devotions, or while you're listening to Pastor James's full teaching on how to be refreshed through your time with the Lord. Request this new collection when you call 800-545-6800 or go online to jamesmcdonald.tv. A couple days ago, I asked you to give your life verse, and we haven't said the theme verse of Walk in the Word TV in a while. Who's got it? Isaiah. Maybe I'll make you guys say it. Isaiah. 3021. 3021 says, whether you turn to the left le or the right, you'll hear a voice behind you saying, saying, this is, is the way, walk in it. Amen. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Now, what that verse is talking about, of course, is, is that God uh, uses messengers mm -hmm. and God appoints messengers. And we pray that uh, this has been an appointment yeah. for you with God. And uh, the people here, we don't have it all together, but we know uh, God through His Son, Jesus Christ. We know that God wrote a book and that uh, we pray that you have heard a voice today saying this is the way, walk in it. That's what we're all about. This program was paid for by the friends and partners of Walk in the Word.